have your Bibles this morning, if you will open them to Psalm 36. To Psalm 36. It's a beautiful psalm penned from David. It says, The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart, that there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. <clears throat> thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep. O Lord, thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life, and thy light shall we see light. O oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down, and shall not be able to rise. This song can be broken up into two main sections. They were describing the wicked man in comparison to a just God in who that we put our trust. David describes the wicked man. He says that the transgression of the wicked within my heart, there is no fear of God before his eyes. There's no fear of God before his eyes. When one considers the term fear, it's a term meaning respect. The wicked man has no respect of God, nor of his laws. When you consider Psalm 14, 1, it says, The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. When you consider the term, in the heart, it's a very interesting term. In Matthew 15, verses 1 through 20, and we won't take the time out to read, exactly read that passage this morning, but a brief rundown of the passage is where that some of the disciples of Christ started to eat without washing their hands. And the Pharisees, who had bound the tradition of washing hands before you eat by law, they were all up in arms. And Jesus had told them that their traditions were making the laws of God of none effect. Because they had so many traditions, they were bounding by law. They were binding by law, rather. Christ said that it's not what you put into your mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out of your mouth. And the disciples asked him, What do you mean by this? And he told them, <coughs> That out of the mouth, basically, is what comes out of the heart. The biblical heart is the mind. It's the mind. In other words, what you say, what you do, it all comes back to here. It all comes back to what processes are going on in your mind. The mind is a very interesting thing. It unlocks the secrets to man. If you are consistent in what you do and what you say, whether it be evil or good, it has to start from the mind. If you say one thing and do another, or say false things, you are basically a hypocrite and a liar. 
But still, it starts with the mind. It starts with the mind. And so, you have, the, you have the wicked man in Psalm 36 starting off that in his mind he has no respect of God. He, has, he gives no regard to God's laws. But then another quality of the wicked man as he flattereth himself in his own eyes. When you consider the term flattereth, basically flattery, he gives flattery to himself. When you say smooth things to someone, they say, don't, don't give me flattery. Or, or you're just trying to flatter me. Saying smooth things. You can imagine when my dad was courting my mom, he, he said some smooth things to her. Well, she probably wouldn't have agreed to marry him. Flattery can be good or bad. But what this man, the wicked man of Psalm 36 is doing, he's giving flattery to himself. Oh, I'm just too cool for this. Oh, I just, <clears throat> I don't have to worry about this stuff. Some people today would term the man, the wicked man from Psalm 36, he thinks he's a cool cat. He thinks he's a cool cat. The wicked man of Psalm 36, he's telling himself, it's all right. It's going to be all right. When in actuality it isn't. He's already shown foolishness by not giving respect to God's law. But then, another quality. Words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He's left off to be wise and to do good. He seeks self gain and he speaks lies and hateful things. That's what the wicked man does. The wicked man speaks lies. Too often, when you consider business owners, they'll tell lies. Can't help but remember what someone told me about. About how that their boss wanted them to lie to make a sale, even if it put the, employee, the, uh, the customer in physical danger. I remember someone once telling me, oh, you have to use deceitful practice and lie.